Okay, for this example, we are going to start with a delta G value. This is a negative 21.6 kilojoule per mole value for delta G. This is delta G at standard conditions, which is why it's at 298 Kelvin. And what we want to know is what is the equilibrium for this con or what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? KEQ, which we sort of offhandedly mentioned in the equilibrium chapter, is kind of a combination between KC and KP. Anything that is aqueous, we treat as molarity, just like Kc would be. Anything that is a gas, we treat as K, or we treat as a pressure, which is the same thing we would have done for Kp. So Keq is kind of like Kc and Kp at the same time. Okay, so for this stuff, it's essentially just plug and chug. So the equation delta G at standard conditions is equal to negative RT times the natural log of KEQ. Okay, well, delta G we know. R, I guess I'll show my work here. This is negative 21.6 kilojoules per mole. R is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. The temperature is 298. Okay, and KEQ is what we're solving for. So, first things first, R is gonna dictate what units we need. Our temperature is in Kelvin, so that's good, but this is in kilojoules per mole instead of joules per mole. So we are going to convert this by multiplying by 1,000 to negative 21,600 joules per mole. Okay, so, algebra, I guess. So, I'm actually going to do all my work before I plug any numbers in here. So we need to solve for KEQ. So delta G, standard conditions, minus, equals minus RT, natural log of KEQ. We need to get rid of this natural log, but not before we get rid of this RT. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative RT. So that all cancels out, and that all cancels out, and we have natural log of KEQ. I'm going to rewrite it to make it clear what's going on here. Whether the negative is on bottom or on top isn't really important. Now, since this is a natural log, we need to use log, this is log based E, so we need to do E to the both sides to get that to go away. So KEQ is equal to E to the negative delta G divided by RT. All of this is an exponent doesn't have to be in parentheses, but I'm just trying to make sure it's obvious that all of this is an exponent. Well, we have all those numbers, so we're going to plug them in. So, E is a button on your calculator. Delta G is negative 21,600, but it's negative that, so it's going to be positive 21,600 joules per mole, divided by 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin, and then that's times 298 Kelvin. Okay, typing this in your calculator. So, I'm gonna hit second e, e to the x, it's essentially the second button of the natural log. I'm gonna go ahead and put parentheses around it because we have a bunch of stuff to type in. So 21600 divided by Another set of parentheses, 8.3145 times 298. So the way I have written this is this inner set of parentheses ensures that the, the denominator in our exponent is multiplied and that this is the numerator and that all of that is the exponent. And the value I get is 6,110, okay? Well, remember that KEQ, kind of like KC or KP, can have values anywhere from like 10 to the negative 15th to 10 to the positive 15th. I'm gonna put it in scientific notation because that's typical for KEQ, but our answer essentially comes out to 6.11 times 10 to the third. Okay, now checking to make sure this answer makes any sense here. If we have a delta G of negative 21,000 point, or sorry, negative 21.6 kilojoules per mole, this means the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. 
we don't even know what the reaction is, but we know that it is spontaneous because it has a negative delta G. A KEQ bigger than one, which this is, you know, 6,000, means that this reaction is predominantly going in the forward direction, which is the same thing as having a spontaneous reaction. So, self-consistent should be good.